have to start with, with today's location. We're somewhere a little different at the Community Hub as part of the, the food drop-off, which is happening over the next couple of days. Uh, terrific response already, isn't it? Yeah, quite humbling, to be honest, when I walked in. Uh, I wasn't... I didn't really have an image in my head. I wasn't expecting one table of just a few chocolate biscuits. I thought there'd be, you know, uh, and it is day one and it is early on, but yeah, it's pretty humbling how decent uh, people are. Um, and the fans have brought this in and they'll continue to bring it in for people who are obviously struggling within the city. So it's, it's a nice gesture from the club, but obviously from the fans who have brought it in. I was here on, on Monday with a couple of your players for a community event as well. And, and I know it is always at the front of your mind, but it's a reminder that, that the football club is, is much more than that to the community. Yeah, it is. And the players uh, uh, need to know that as well. I had a meeting with the head of the community in front of the players the other day and, you know, I asked them to speak and say how we can help in any way we can. I'll try and use the lads any way I can in the nicest possible sense. And I've said this from day one, that my job is to try and improve them as footballers but also improve them as men and they're part of the society and the, the effects they have are, um, I can't be underestimated I, I've seen it firsthand how you know if a player goes into a school or goes into a children's hospice uh, or whatever the case may be it has a massive impact and it's quite empowering for the lads and it's quite rewarding to the community so it's a relationship that I think should get stronger and stronger and one that while I'm in charge I'll definitely encourage. Onto the football, you've had another quieter week. Has that been welcome ahead of? Sorry, watch? I just laughed because I could hear the uh, knitters up there going "woo." It sounded very exciting, whatever they're talking about. But sorry, ask me again. We'll, we'll speak to them after this. Um, yeah, a quieter week for you, comparatively at least. Yeah. Has that come at a good time, given the test that you've got coming up on Saturday? Yes, yeah, allowed us uh, a little bit more time on the grass. Obviously, um, today uh, when I'm doing this with you, it's a Thursday. We've done a lot more um, shape play than we normally do. We normally do it on a Friday, but because of the early kickoff Saturday, we'll train a little bit lighter tomorrow. We've been able to do quite a bit with them individually and collectively on Tuesday. So yeah, it just feels a bit more normal. Uh, it's been absolute chaos since we've been in the building. It feels like we've had a game virtually every second, third day. So uh, just to have a bit of normality this month and allows us to attack the month in the best prepared way we can. It doesn't guarantee success, but it gives you a better opportunity to perform at a level to get success. So, uh, yeah, it takes us into the game Saturday. Looking forward to it. And it's a club that I'm sure you know well and, and you've come up against a few times and, and I'm sure you've come up against Aaron Moore a few times as well. Yeah, I have. Um, really good bloke. I know he played here, so um, he'll probably get a better reception than me come Saturday, which uh, I seem to enjoy quite a lot. Uh, but, yeah, he's a great bloke, done really well at Wednesday, built a team last you know, couple of transfer windows to be really competitive and they are you know they you know their league position doesn't lie obviously and they'll be up and about there come the end of the season so if we can be competitive against a team like that then we're making the right steps you'll be coming up against a, a few former players as well a couple for the first time um will volks was an important player for you a few yep, years ago definitely michael smith and and michael heckway as well I, I know how important relationships with players are to you i just wondered what they're like sort of when either party moves on. Are you, are you still in touch with a lot of people? Yeah, I spoke to uh, Will Vokes a lot uh, when he was at Cardiff, when he, um, you know, if he wasn't in the team and that, uh, more so, if I'm honest. I spoke to him about a few things he had, but I'm really pally with him. I still speak to Will a bit. Spoke to Smudge. I text Smudge this week because I know they've got Newcastle in the cup and he's a massive Newcastle fan. I also texted him at the weekend after he'd scored two when he came off the bench and he texted back joking about uh, we had a conversation in my office saying how he's a bad sub, and we did, uh, in fairness, so that shows what I know. Uh, I haven't spoken to Icky as much. I have texted him a couple of times, uh, wish him all the best. But it is strange because they go from being like your boys to suddenly not your boys, but you still want them to do well. And I do want them to do well. They're, they've been brilliant for me in my career and our career as coaches, but they're brilliant humans, but not so well against us come at the weekend. But any other weekend, I want them to do well. Is it important, I guess, though, that, that current players know and can look at your relationships with former players, that the things you say and the emotions that they feel and, and feel from you, that is genuine from your, from your side? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I know that when, um, when we came into the club, the dressing room would have definitely done their research. They'd have all fired texts out. And I'm not saying every player I've ever managed thinks I'm the best one ever. I don't expect that. But I like to think that they, they would say that I'm... 
I'm genuine, if nothing else. So, uh, so yeah, so I'd like to think that the players, we're building a relationship with the players now and they know that we have their backs, they know we respect them and we, they know we're there for them. And that's all we can do as uh, football coaches and we're just trying to get the best out of them. So, yeah, I think it, it is good if they see that, you know, what we've done in the past. So, for example, if I was a player and I knew a manager came in, I would text a player I knew played with him and if they went, oh, he's all right, but the assistant's a whopper or vice versa, I'd think, oh, or they might turn around and go, look, he's just a liar. Or they might turn around and say, look, he's probably the best manager you'll play for. And it does have an effect on you. So, you know, I'd like to think that everyone we've managed as a coaching staff would be, you know, don't have to agree with everything we do, quite obviously, but respect everything we do. So I think, yeah, that's a good question. I think it is important to me and it is important to me that I have relationships in my life in and out of football that are important and I like to keep keep alive and with players I've had relationships with I, I, I keep very open. And how much are you and, and your group looking forward to having a home game on Saturday? Yeah it'd be nice I mean in fairness I drove from the training ground to get here and I got lost I went around the roundabout twice I took the wrong uh, turn in which wasn't good so I haven't been down here that many times uh, and we were joking that our home form uh, since we've been here hasn't been amazing but we've only played three so uh, it's hard to judge, but yeah, it'd be nice to come for a home game. It's nice, selfishly, it's nice for my family to come uh, and watch us manage at this football club, and it's still a little bit surreal. So, no, really looking forward to the game, and like, it isn't going to take much to get the players up for Saturday because they know the importance of it, but it will feel, I think it will feel like a playoff game, um, and hopefully it will live up to it. Best of luck. Thanks, mate. Thank you.